Hello everyone, this is an introduction about Avalonia UI. We're going to get into a high level comparison between Avalonia and other frameworks. So this is just a high comparison. I'm not going to go deep. Let's get started. So Avalonia is a cross platform .NET UI framework, which means that you can write once and export to different platforms like Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and even mobile and web using WebAssembly. It uses the XAML like WPF and UDP, but it's not tied to Windows. In Avalonia, it's called AXAML, A for Avalonia. So this framework is for WPF and UWP devs looking for a modern alternative. And also for Xamarin and Maui devs who want better desktop support. And also newcomers to .NET, GUI development. So if you want to compare it to other Framework like WPF. WPF is Windows only, uh, UDP is the same, MAUI is more focused. It's cross-platform. It doesn't support Linux as I already used MAUI. At that time, they didn't support uh, MAUI. I don't know currently right now, but I haven't heard or haven't read about Linux support in MAUI. And it's more focused toward mobile. So Avalonia uses XAML. It's similar to WPF. About MAUI, it's a little bit different. There are some quirks. For future proof, Avalonia is still in active development. And WPF, it has some maintenance. And UDP, I think it's deprecated. And MAUI is more focused toward mobile. There is another alternative to Avalonia which is Udo platform, which is this platform as you can see here. Uses the same XAML. So the difference that I find is that Avalonia doesn't support Hot Reload while YouTube platform does support it, as you can see here. And also it's free. And when I did the research about Avalonia Hot Reload, actually here is the answer. We don't plan to implement Hot Reload in the foreseeable future as it would require extensive engineering effort. And here, if we were to implement Hot Reload, it would have to be paid feature. As you can see, even if they implement Hot Reload, it will be a paid feature. While in UNO platform, it's already implemented and also is free. So this is just a simple overview just to show you that there is alternatives also. And at the end, you can decide. But for me, I'm going to continue with Avalonia. So if you need the desktop app that runs everywhere, so Avalonia is the best choice. You can also, as I said, use a uni platform. So if you are coming from WPF, you will find it really easy and familiar. So the first thing that you need to do to install is let's go to installation. First thing, let's go to, for me, I'm using Rider. Let's open it. So let's open your terminal. So make sure you do, you have already .NET. The, the .NET SDK is already downloaded. So when you download .NET SDK, it's going to download automatically with it the .NET runtime. So let's go copy this and, and paste it here. All right. And that's it. When you go to, let's open, let's bring it here. Let's open this project. All right. Now you need to install the Avalonia plugin. What you're going to do is go to settings and then in plugins here. And then here, search for Avalonia. This one, Avalonia Rider. Just install it. I think when you finish, it tells you to restart your ID and do it. And that's it. You already installed the template and the plugin. That's it. You can start. Okay. Now this part here, you can enable it by clicking here. So this is the Avalonia Live Previewer. Anything you change in XAML here, it will be reflected straight away. For example, if you do this, let's get this. Control X. You can see it's going to be reflected here, as you can see. So actually this simple tool, I exported it as a, a deb extension. If I, if I close Rider and open up my file explorer, let's go to, let's bring it here to the list. Let's go to bin release .NET 8. All right, here is the deb file. This is the installation of that tool. So this is a self-contained. You don't need the .NET runtime to make this tool work because it's already included, but you can do it. So first time that I did it is without the .NET runtime included, which were just six megabyte, but with .NET runtime included. So now it's 28, which means that now you can even a machine that doesn't have .NET runtime, it will work. Okay, let's go to our terminal. If we do a to do, the list up, you can see it's running. Kind of example task one. 
special medium okay a task as you can see task 2 and then description 2 let's say hi work I can change uh, the date here let's keep it that way and uh, as you can see it's working perfectly so this is an example of a tool made using Avalonia and I'm currently on Linux all right, we're going to start a brand new project. Let's click on new solution and then let's call it hire practice. Okay, practice Avalonia and then all right, uh, choose the Avalonia.net MPVM app and then press create. So Avalonia already comes with a very simple example. We curve on, curve on it. As you can see, right, that's it. It's just showing this label. So you can enable the uh, Avalonia Live Previewer. Just click this here and go to rotate it. Click here, change all your tension. All right. Uh, control and mouse, mouse wheel. So currently I'm going to add a button. So when we have one control, we can do it this way, but when we have more than one control, we have, you have to be inside a layout. So I'm going to create stack layout, stack panel. All right. All right, and now I'm going to add a, a button. As to content, let's uh, let's call it clicky me. Okay, you can see it in the live preview, and uh, let's center it. So horizontal alignment center. All right, and I want to once say click it, it changes into a button clicked. So let's add the command. So we're going to use MVVM. So command, and we're going to do binding. I'm going to bind it and uh, let's call it for example a uh, button clicked command okay uh, you can see that it was uh, the indentation was made automatically that it's because they installed in a plugin and here if you go to settings and plugin here, if you go installed, okay, you can search for a XAML styler and install it. And once you press save, it will be applied automatically. Okay, now I'm going to create this uh, button clicked in the view model. So here I'm gonna say, uh, relay command, relay command, and relay should be private. Right, and also so it's going to be button clicked that's it we don't add the command and then so we need to change the greeting first it should be a, a observable property observable property yeah and observable property is private and it should be lowercase you can do this I like to do uh, the underscore and should remove the get and that's it and now from this field we're going to get a property uh, greeting with a uppercase like this greeting as you can see and now you can change it once we click it we can change it to for example button clicked let's run it Okay, you can see that the red line went off and let's press F5. Okay, here is the output window. If we click it, you can see it changed. Okay, so what's happening here? So here we are following the MVVM, the model view, view model pattern to keep our UI logic and data separate from the visual design. So here, the view, which is uh, has a, a XAML extension, it's like the HTML of the app. And the view model here is a C-sharp class that contains the data and logic. 
So the text block displays some text that comes from the view model greeting property. The te text block is going to look at the property greeting in the uh, main view model. And note that this is just uh, like saying uh, get the value, get the value of greeting from the view model. And the button is clickable and it's connected to a command which is button clicked command that runs some logic when clicked. So what this does is actually this line automatically creates a public property greeting and tells Avalonia to notify the UI when it changes. And this creates a command called button clicked command which runs this method when the button is clicked. The method changes the greeting property to button clicked and thanks to data binding, the UA updates automatically. So how the, uh, how the view communicate with the view model? How it knows which view model to, to pick? So you can see here we have imported, it's actually when I created the template, it came automatically. But if you create another view model, we do it this way. We do, we do, we import the view model and then take the necessary view model. As you can see here, VM, uh, main view model, and this view uh, just just says, hey, bind your properties to to the main window view, view model. So here, the XAML sets the data context to the main window view model, so it knows where to look for properties like greeting and uh, button clicked command. And then the UI shows the initial greeting when you click the button, it triggers the command and the command updates the greeting. Then the UI refreshes itself without any manual code. All right, that's it for this example. I think a very really simple example. It shows uh, how data binding works and also it introduces commands for handling UI actions and it uses observable property. So the UI stays in sync with the data. All right, see you in the next tutorial.